Ah, <sighs> oh, hello and welcome to my lab. As you can tell, uh, we've outfitted the lab with VR. In fact, we have two VR headsets. So I was able to use four of the lighthouses in order to track the entirety of the lab. So if you look up there, we've got one lighthouse up there and then uh, over here. Here you can see I had to lower this one down a little bit in order to make the clearance for the garage door. And then I just uh, taped the wire all the way along to the outlet for the garage door. And because we have uh, four of them, we're able to track uh, nearly the whole lab, or at least as much of the lab as I'd care to track. And that allows us to uh, set up kind of arbitrary play areas. And uh, if anyone else brings other um, indexes specifically, uh, valve indexes, uh, then we'll be able to just go ahead and have them use our lighthouses and set up more player areas, areas for uh, multiplayer VR experiences. And the inspiration for doing this is because uh, I just actually made a new computer. In fact, we've got a couple of new computers, but we'll just look at mine. Um, it's over here. Let's take a look. This here is the uh, first computer I've made in probably, probably about seven years. Um, I mean, I've made every computer I've had except like the first one I had, so it's still old hat. But um, the cool thing about this one is that I didn't cut any corners building this thing. This is my new uh, machine for editing as well as CAD work and everything. Um, but you know, what's nice about it is it also runs games very well. And I built it in a very small form factor with a nice little handle here so I can just uh, pick it up and move it around. So normally this thing's in my office, but uh, when I wanna play VR or you know, do some, some experience in VR, then the idea is that I can just uh, unplug it from my office, pick up the handle, bring it out here, and then uh, I should just be able to hook it up to the headset and just go into VR. There is one problem though. Um, first of all, I need to be able to log into the computer and I can't do that with a headset for some reason. Um, you know, Windows security and all that. The second issue is that um, for some reason, the video card doesn't seem to be able to properly crank out frames without a monitor attached. So even if I can log in and, I, and I'm in the headset, uh, if the headset's the only thing plugged into the computer, it gives me really horrible frame rates. And um, uh, maybe I could fix this somehow in software, but I don't really wanna spend a bunch of time digging into why the video card isn't you know, trying very hard. Instead, why not uh, just plug in a, you know, a little monitor like so? That's, uh, that should do it, but that's very convenient. I don't want to carry this little monitor around. Instead, maybe, maybe we could just integrate it into the front. That's what I think I want to do. So I'm going to actually build this monitor into the front of the case, and then I can use it to uh, log in, and then um, you know maybe even show the headset uh, view on the front end for people who want to see whatever um, but that nice thing is that will allow me to have a monitor and it won't break my uh, concept of high mobility so essentially it's just going to be the world's largest and most powerful tablet very strange so in order to do this i'm going to have to take my precious computer case and uh, bring it over to the mill and uh, cut a slot out and uh, hopefully i can make the right size standoffs and everything so that it's completely flush with the the surface of the case here and probably should look nice. All right, so um, here is the uh, front plate that we were looking at earlier. And uh, for the uninitiated, the first thing you've always got to do is figure out how you're going to hold the uh, thing you're going to cut on the mill. Now, uh, I just put some cardboard here and I'm not going to be pressing very hard. Um, so I can tie this down and apply pressure as I need to. Uh, but I don't need to press very hard because all I'm going to do in this operation is make some small holes. And then I'm going to use those holes to uh, screw this thing down to a sacrificial aluminum block. So once I've got that screwed down, I can uh, go ahead and clamp onto that aluminum block in the vise. You know, with this, thing whole, this whole thing flipped around. And then we can go ahead and mill out the pocket that I'm going to need. But before we can do any cutting, uh, I need to make sure that this thing lines up with the uh, axis of the mill, like so. Um, and in order to do that, I've got this indicator here. Now this thing's just gonna measure uh, how far away uh, the plunger is, this little plunger guy. You'll see that closer in a minute. Uh, it, it just detects a, dist a change in distance. 
Um, we don't actually care about the exact distance. We just want to know if the distance is changing as I drag this uh, left to right, right to left. Because uh, obviously if this is uh, changing distance, that means that we're out of uh, alignment here. So if I can get that to essentially stay more or less in the same position as I sweep back and forth, then we're aligned with the mill and we can go ahead and uh, start cutting. Okay, hopefully you can see everything just fine. Um, now remember the exact measurement on here just doesn't even matter. Um, what we're looking for is a relative measurement. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring it over here and you can see the distance is changing. And then as I go, I'm gonna be tapping on it. Don't know if you can see that from there, but oh yeah, that made a big difference. Maybe too much. Oh yeah. So I'm probably gonna to have to tighten this one down a little bit. It jumps around too easily. Okay. So I'm just rolling along and I'm just gonna to try to pull the needle back a little bit every time. And you'll see that as I do that, the needle's moving away less rapidly. Eventually we'll reach a point where it more or less stays in the same place. Okay, so this is pretty close, probably close enough for uh, what I'm doing here. Okay, so um, this is all tightened down and uh, in plane with the axis here. Uh, but the problem is I don't have enough travel to get the holes that I would need over here. So I think I'm just gonna um, capture this corner over here, use that as my reference, and then cut the two holes I need on this side and then um, screw that into that sacrificial block and then kind of use that. Once I flip it over, I'll cut the other two holes and then I'll be able to screw in all four holes. So it's a little bit janky, but in order to do it better, I think I'd have to uh, move this uh, vise and I'm gonna be using the vise next. So I don't really wanna do that. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do that. Alright, with the first two mounting holes uh, cut in this panel, I went ahead and uh, made this block off camera. Uh, it's just a scrap piece of aluminum that's going to be a bit of a, a sacrificial block. I cut the, uh, I mean, I don't know if you, you can see that, but I've cut the same hole pattern that we're going to need. That way I can go ahead and bolt this onto this, clamp the block in the vise here, and that gives me the holding power that, that I'm gonna need in order to cut uh, the hole, the pocket that we're gonna need in here. So um, the, the thing is, because I was only able to get the two screws in, of course, uh, I'm gonna have to put the other two screw holes in first. I'm also going to uh, go ahead and scry, or uh, scribe, that's a different word, uh, scribe the uh, outline that I want in here first before I go ahead and cut the pocket because that end mill, it's a uh, quarter inch end mill, so it's gonna leave a radius on the corners and that's not what I want. So I'm gonna have to, uh, after, after we've cut most everything out, I'm gonna have to go back with a file and just get the, the corners uh, squared up. And that, that scry line is gonna help me uh, do that.
Aha! There we go. That looks like it belongs there, that hole. Um, the, uh, so the only thing left is that these are, if you can notice, uh, the corners are just slightly rounded. So let's uh, take the file to it and then it should fit that display. All right, there we go. Uh, the edges are filed and I'll just fit this right in there. Nice and tight. All right, yeah, that works. Um, so this needs to be cleaned up a little bit, but it fits. And then I just, now I just need to make some spacers. I don't know how well you can see that. Let me bring it in. Let's see if that focuses. Uh, right in there. There needs to be a spacer so that this is nice and flush up here, if I can hold it all together. So I can probably just 3D print something there and then uh, put some black screws on top so they'll uh, match the front face nicely and then uh, maybe some screws from the bottom and then that should stay put. And welcome back. Uh, today is tomorrow and um, I printed a bunch of these little spacer washer thingies at different heights and these are the ones, whoop, I caught it. <laughs> uh, these are the ones that uh, fit just right so clean these up and put that in there, leaves it flush um, as we talked about. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this and then um, uh, I have some wires to run and uh, we're, just gonna, we're just gonna montage that whole thing. So let's get started on all of that. Here we are. It works exactly like I wanted. Uh, the, when I start up the computer, I use the screen to log in, and then I have it configured to automatically start uh, VR when, I, uh, when I'm logged in. So now it's uh, here just standing by, so I can put the headset on and go right into VR. So that's really all I wanted to do, and uh, just figured as long as I'm gonna do that, I might as well make a little mini episode. So uh, there's that, it looks pretty good. Um, it's a little bit scrapy up towards the edges here. If I get annoyed by that, I'll probably make a little plastic bezel uh, to put around that. But I think, at least for now, I'm quite happy with this. So uh, I guess it's time to go uh, use the VR. <laughs> 